Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. How many of you um, gave your uh, personal um, deal yesterday to the group? How many? I don't know. I mean, to the group up here, not to your little chicken shit. Just raise your hands again, please. Okay, how, okay, put them down. How many still have your personal deal to give? Okay. Now, I didn't pick the three or four worst on purpose. It just happened that way. But the reason why we, you bring deals, and you don't have to have deals to come here, but bring deals is to go over the deals to see um, where the shortfall is. Well, in the examples that you guys gave me yesterday, you can't even compare because it's not even remotely close to a deal. Does everybody understand that? I'm not doing it to poke fun, although I get a chuckle out of it, how you can be so fucking ignorant. But anyway, that's personally, because but I'm a lot smarter than you. And see, and I'm not afraid to say it, how you can get it so fucked up. But there's method in my madness. And then we had one uh, deal, the Pixar deal, and then we got the Dabisco deal. Uh, thrown in at the same time, just to uh, not not to illustrate how different those deals are, other than not just uh, because they're multi-billion-dollar deals, but the thought process. Because there is a thought process when you do a Pixar deal. You know, no plan goes past the first bullet. You know, when they first started that deal a long, long time ago. They had other ideas. I'm su sure Steve Jobs had other ideas, and then it turned out to be whatever it was. The same with Nabisco, and I told you that the Nabisco deal was driven by fees. The difference between 20.3 billion and 24 billion, more or less, were fees. Most of, not everything, but mostly fees. And I told you in my 50-year career uh, that I've never not had a deal completed when I had uh, success fees. Somehow we get a somehow the professionals figure out a way to get the fucking thing done. Um, but there's a section that we normally wait till later on in the week, but we're going to do it today instead. The, um, uh, after reading emails from some of the uh, uh, mentees out in the, in the field, and my emails uh, seem to accelerate during the seminars. I don't know why they think I'm going to answer them, because I don't answer them. And that's the truth. It's like the Dutch, uh, Dutch kid uh, from the last seminar from two and a half weeks ago, 20-year-old. He said, well, how, you know, when we have problems, how do we get a hold of you? And it's, it's on YouTube. I said, you don't. This is it, kid. Just like Pontius Pilate did to Christ, I'm washing my fucking hands of you, fat little piece of shit. He happens to be a fat piece of shit. Some of you in this room tried to contact me since the seminar. Even though I told you I wouldn't, in this country they don't say would not, I wouldn't be answering. You have all the materials. The meatheads have all the materials. And again, 99.9% .9 of all the deals that are done on the planet since May of 1993 I've never met. And as I said in the last seminar, uh, I got a little nostalgic, if that's the right word, uh, because uh, since the uh, major uh, article is, gonna, uh, is coming out after the first of the year about me uh, in a major uh, metropolitan newspaper and a documentary about me. And so I had a, uh, I don't know if reflect is the right word. I don't know if that's the right word, but I reflected about a lot of things and going through albums and looking at pictures, and um, in preparation for this seminar, and uh, it um, became obvious to me, uh, because they asked um, who, uh, they didn't ask it this way, but what they were really asking, are there mentees over these, this long period of time uh, that we could interview? They didn't ask it that way. Uh, because most of them don't want to talk, um, they're, um, they want the money, but not the notoriety. 
and I've said this before, and I believe, and Sally believes even more firmly than I do, that it's because they're not paying taxes, and they don't want to come out in a Chicago Tribune or, or NBC or whatever, and then all of a sudden, they're on you. Because the IRS looks at that shit in America. The Inland Revenue in this country, and whatever they call them in Australia, they look at those films for loudmouth fucking punks. Mostly they're e-commerce loudmouth punks or rappers that think they don't have to pay taxes. Um, and you might have noticed that one of the last things that's come up, uh, I don't think it's going to get approved before Trump's out, is the tax, um, uh, the internet. If I was still in that business, I would have gotten diarrhea. Now, I pay all my taxes, but 99% of the people that are on Amazon and all those things don't pay any taxes. And if those big companies, those big platforms, are going to be obligated to give the information to the taxing authorities, most of the people that come to this seminar are fucked. Because you pay no taxes, and now you're going to be chased. But that's, that, that's an, an aside. Um, so when the... Um, in preparation for this, and in looking back, thank you, Edward. In looking back uh, upon my uh, long, and uh, in, in some cases illustrious career, uh, certain things popped out, and I alluded to one of them yesterday when I talked about the 16 or 17 guys, and uh, the of two of which I'm chairman, the other I'm not chairman, that have done very, very well, exceptionally well during the Corona period, doing as many as 11 deals during Corona alone. And of course, uh, Andreas uh, and uh, Thomas done seven or eight and nine, uh, and Gerard doing seven or eight. Um, the, uh, but they all believed. They believed in, well, they say me, but they believed in the system first. And as Thomas, the, the young French kid, Chinese French kid uh, in uh, Canada said, I believed in Dan because the system worked and he showed me people that made it work, so why can't I make it work? In words of that effect. Uh, the, uh, I think, therefore, I am kind of thing. And, but they started with faith. They believed. And then slowly but surely, they started believing in themselves. Because you can believe in me all day long. If you don't believe in yourself to get this done, you won't get it done. Now, how could... The examples that we've seen, your individual deals, be so fucked up beyond recognition. Like, you almost didn't hear what you taught, learned in the first seminar. I mean, i.e., you don't have tax returns. And remember I told you, the cases that are presented here, your own personal cases, are what do I need to buy the business? sell the business, or merge the business, right? And one of those things is tax returns. Uh, or I haven't got that information back because the, the broker tells you he's asking the prospective seller for the information, but he's not getting it. That's normally what the case is, right? How do you know that the, the broker is even asking the prospective seller? Can you prove it? Would you stake your life on it? Probably not. Because it's part of his sales mechanism to give you as least amount of information to make a commission for himself, this is the broker, as possible. Because any broker worth his salt knows that if you get 100% of the information, you're probably not going to buy. Because 100% of the information are all the skeletons. And you realize, and I said it many times during the seminar, <clears throat> the broker is, you can make him your friend, but for the most part, they're not your friend. Because as, as Marcus Bauer pointed out uh, qu quite eloquently, and you're going to hear him in a webinar in a couple of days, is that a broker is there to make a sale, just not necessarily your sale. He's there just to make a sale, to make a commission. Yeah, you act like he's your brother. Or he's, you know, he's, he's blood. And I told you at the beginning of the regular seminar and ad nauseum through the seminar that the brokers aren't your friends. Yet most of the deals that I heard yesterday, the your deals, um, 
they may have started with a cold call, but they end up with a broker. And I told you, I went through two or three examples. How you can get the information where, the, where, where these, um, these guys are, even if uh, um, off a, um, a broker's web page, and then you go to them, and you, when, when, when does your deal, when does your, uh, your uh, agreement with the broker expire? And fine, I said, give me a call when your, your deal with the broker expires. But I don't think anybody in this room did that. And the deals, your individual deals, uh, the, um, while it's good for you to understand how the Nabisco and the AOLs of this world uh, do deals, they are here, and you are here. It's like, I made the example, uh, uh, it's like uh, they are the uh, New York Yankees under Steinbrenner when they were working, winning all the world championships, and you're a high school baseball team. And when I asked the individuals that presented their own cases, how long, I didn't say wasted, I said, how long were you working on this? All of you said, in different ways, too long. And I told you that it takes me, a microsecond is an exaggeration, but uh, 10 seconds is not an exaggeration for me to ascertain whether it's worth even bothering with. Right? Yet you took not hours, not days, not weeks even, but months to bring a transaction here that's really not worth going over. Now, in two seminars ago, we had a guy um, from Mexico and another guy in one seminar ago, we had another guy from someplace else, and I said, when I hit my foot on the ground like this, he said, self-sabotaging, right? That's all you've done since you left the seminar. From Ed, who is a sophisticated businessman, great career, in the real world, to down to the uh, Persian meathead, who says he's made 72,000 cold calls and he's just waiting for the money to come in. And we engage in self-sabotaging because we don't believe we deserve to win. You can go all through all the fucking steps Half-ass. We all know we've worked with people that are half-ass, right? You, we got to go fix whatever they did or whatever, right? We've all worked with people that didn't go the extra mile. Forget the extra mile like Bruce Whipple says. Forget that fuck. That extra mile, Brucey, that extra mile is so motherfucking dead, you, you should take it out of your vocabulary. I don't know anybody that goes there other than me and Whipple and a few others and those 16 guys that did deals during corona. Because you didn't get those deals done during corona not going the extra mile. Because for whatever reason, I was more successful instilling into those kids that this is where we are today. And normally I make this impassioned speech the last day. But I'm going to make it today. Make it today. And because you and most people, as I said, have taken your foot off the accelerator because you, not consciously. Remember when we were talking about affirmations and goals, I said, your subconscious doesn't know you're full of shit. Some of us are more full of shit than others just because you're ethnicity. This, naturally, the Dutch are full of shit. Since they came off with the greatest scam, tulip bulbs, in 1535-ish, I mean, they invented the, the scam. They invented it. Okay, but other, there's a few ethnicities that just are full of more shit. You're going to come out of here. From today, you can still get a deal done between now and the year end. From today. From the last day of the seminar, 
to the end of the year. There's three days, I think. You can still get a deal done between that and the end of the year. The last, this is a bit of a Trump exaggeration. The last day of the seminar, I could get a done, deal done before the end of the year. I'm not saying build a, a dream team and all that in one day, but I, you certainly can, because we have at our disposal the, the, big, the greatest, the uh, most useful error in our quiver is 100% seller finance. 100% seller finance. One of, um, um, one of the kids has got a, uh, uh, his, uh, his first meeting at the seller's request is, is, is today, Christmas Eve. Now, when a seller says, I'm in a hurry and I can meet Christmas Eve, even you, that can get a deal done. They didn't ask him over there on Christmas fucking Eve. He seems reasonably serious. Now, the, the meathead in the deal, which i got to take a deep breath. Uh, that's the closest I come to, uh, you know, uh, yeah, meditation. Um, to get the deal done, but, you know, maybe he thinks he's going over there for a coffee. I, I have no idea what the young kids think anymore. But I would be on that motherfucker's doorstep the day before Christmas Eve from yesterday, and I would be on him like a cheap suit. So we'll see. We should know something by tomorrow. And I hope that I come in here pounding my chest and, and not the universal head down. Um, the, um, by the way, Winston, Winston got through the night. He didn't pee or poo in the, in the house. I just, I, just, I just wanted to tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't pee or poo. I, I can't speak for yourself. But uh, the, um, so it, it all went well, um, which I'm happy to say. And he... Uh, as I told you, he continues to grow. Um, last night, um, um, you saw my namesake, and having spent um, my birthday at his house, um, and I've said this several times, but it's uh, now he. Other than he was, if they say he was five foot one, he was probably four foot eight. Okay. Uh, other than a weird dude, but it's, it's quite ironic for all the money he's given in the 2,500 libraries that he's founded and all the, and the universities that he has not got an award uh, from the Queen of England. Even I got an award from the Queen of England, and I say, fuck, shit, cunt. There's a reason why he's not knighted. And, um, and after you've seen what he did, uh, I mean, he was a vicious guy. I mean, his speciality was throwing his best mates under the bus. And remember, they tell me 35 years ago, Dan, you're not tough enough. Otherwise, you would have been the first trillionaire on the planet. And if I'm not tough enough, gentlemen, I don't know what we can call you. Um... But you read a, um, an email that I got, and we're going to start with that, because that's today, or yesterday, or four days ago. What are some of the, and by the way, I'm reading your homework, uh, the, um, those of you that volunteered information yesterday based on the homework, how did you relate to Vanderbilt? The, uh, the, the real scary examples or comparisons, you guys didn't volunteer, because now that I've read them. The, uh, the real you, I'm just a measly cunt with no balls. I've never had any balls. I've never been in a schoolyard fight. I've never, none of those guys volunteered. I'm just a mealy mouth pussy. My vagina lips flap. None, none of you guys volunteered your information. I wonder why. But we'll get around to that when we're not on camera. 
uh, when we ask for the homework. But the one thing that I do want to talk about on camera is that email that uh, I gave you to read and uh, what's, uh, some volunteer information on what you thought. Now, just imagine, the question I should have had you answer, but I didn't, is how close are you to being able to relate to that email? And I'm asking it now. Now, you are we looking at the email? OK. OK, volunteers. Yes, sir. Uh, the whole thing was, looks like uh, she had to do a lot better uh, due diligence. And she had to. Okay, stop there. We're going to pick it apart one, one piece at a time. A lot of you are going to be told by your boards, if you haven't already been told by your boards, let, oh, well, this is so small, we can do the due diligence ourselves. We don't have to go to our big time accountants and spend money. Nine times out of ten, and that's wrong. Not the part that you're going to save money. One, you shouldn't be worried about saving the money because it's not your fucking money. Okay. But number two, you miss shit. Because the guy from KPMG, who was 35 years in, in charge of the healthcare practice for KPMG for the southeastern United States, hasn't been on a due diligence venture in 20, 25 years. That's number one. Number two, GAP, General Accepted Accounting Procedures, although they're roughly the same the last 40 or 50 years, there have been changes. And the guy that been, hasn't been in the field in 20, 25 years may or may not know them because he's got juniors that have been reporting to him, you know, first a, a regular uh, uh, accountant and then a couple of assistant managers and a manager and a junior partner by the time he got to see it. Because, so it was pretty much, he was reside in himself that you would have caught all the mistakes. But now it's up to him to catch the mistakes. He may miss them. So you're right, they didn't do the proper due diligence, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt that probably that team hasn't been in the field in a long time. And when you don't have the hammer of a KPMG or a Deloitte over your head, I'm not saying they don't take it seriously. They should take it seriously because they're getting free founders equity, right? But they make mistakes. And the real thing is there is no penalty if they make a mistake. So go ahead. Broker, stop. We're going to piece of time. How many times have I said nine times out of ten a broker is going to fuck you? Almost everybody in this room is using a broker. I'm going to say it again. Nine times out of ten they're going to fuck you. And almost everybody in this room and everybody in me here, Bill, are using brokers. Why? Because it's easier, ostensibly. Because they have all the, all the information in one, in one source. That's what you think. Most of the deals that I see that are getting done are without a broker. But you're still going to use a broker. Why? Next, go ahead. Thank you. She didn't check with us. I can go. And he'd be singing self sabotage and activity all fucking day long. How many times did I tell you? In the healthcare, assisted living, home care, blah, blah, licensing transfers are hard. They vary from state to state and even sometimes county to county, province to province. And when you don't get the, well, first of all, that's why with licenses are involved, 99 times out of 100, you're going to have to do a, uh, a company purchase because the company already has a license. So when you buy the company, the license transfers with it. Some of you, not in this room, some of you spent four, five, six months and then decide, oh, fuck, I'm better off. I can't do an asset purchase. <sighs> I guess I'm going to have to do a, a stock purchase. Now, five months have passed. You should be able to ascertain that in one phone call in 30 seconds. But you don't. We used to have mentees 
because one of my partners at the Guthrie Group was an ex uh, McKinsey guy, and um, he used to uh, work with the guys on their first deal. And he, they, they have a grading system at McKinsey. There's five different testing things they used to be, and you, you grade them one to ten. And after about five or six months, Jeremy Knight is his name. Oh, he passed away now. And he said, I wouldn't rate any of these guys higher than two or two and a half on a McKenzie deal. Two, two and a half is your, your Down syndrome. Because of the lack of attention to detail. Remember I said, how many times did I said, somebody's got to cross the T's. Somebody's got to dot the motherfucking I's, right? It's probably not going to be you. In fact, I don't want it to be you, but it's somebody on the fucking board. That's why these boards are in transition. The board you have on the first few deals is probably not going to be the same board you have on the next few deals. And then, oh, you get panicked. Your knickers in a twist because, oh, I gave them stock already. I know how you think. So you gave them stock. So what? That's the pay price to action for doing your first few deals. Continue, sir. And also, they don't have a flaw on the print that brings them up to not the expensive price. So they can go at a premium discount. Correct, correct. Uh, I'm not so sure that was attention to or um, self sabotaging activity. There's this sloppiness. When you, when you have to get a deal done overnight, you make mistakes. And when you want to do a deal, a deal bad enough, you do a bad deal because of You don't think it's self-sabotaging activities. But it is. Remember one of the things, the uh, trace of the losers. They're afraid of winning, stroke, losing. So you win. So now... Uh, so now what? Forget you have to run the fuckers. So now what? What are you going to do for your encore, asshole? Duh. And all this permeates your little half a uh, uh, cell brain. It's like when I said, I can't remember the last time I lost. And you can't remember the last time you won. And your subconscious knows that. Anything else? Okay, okay. Any other comments about, yes sir? I actually think the seller was bullshitty and I think she knew it because the way she just dropped her price, dropped her price, dropped her price, then asked for a meeting without an attorney, for me that just settled. Yeah, uh, there's another case, um, uh, it started at 800 grand and uh, she bought it for 50. <laughs> now, you know, I. I I didn't inv invent uh, embarrassing offers. Oh, that was in the Middle East, a guy on a flying carpet invented embarrassing offers, uh, you know, uh, several thousand years ago. But um, the, uh, but especially during Corona times, they understand their subconscious is telling them, this is the seller, it's telling them, we got an asshole that looks like he's a hot one, you. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm, instead of, remember I told you, I've been in kitchen tables where the sun goes down and the sun goes up, and I'm still at the same kitchen table closing. And I don't leave until I sold somebody. Well, now they're the pushy insurance salesman, and they realize, contrary to what they tell you, that the private equity is chasing them, and they got four of them, uh, you're the only game in town. So they're gonna stay with you until you say yes. So they start at 800 and they give it up for 50. That's where the market is. And a meathead over here tells me, and I did some checking up, you're full of shit in the market you're in. You're either lying or stupid or both, because that is not the market. I made a few phone calls last night just to, I knew I was right. I said, and then they said, where is the kid? Introduce him to us. Where is the kid? Introduce, I could do 100, Pad deal, 300 pad deals last night. I know what the market is and almost everything. 
You can buy all day long, three to five times EBITDA, except for some of the high-tech shit. And yours is certainly not a high-tech shit. Yours is the lowest tech, the lowest of the lowest, no teeth, a patch over their eye, and an uh, unloaded gun on their hip. Three to five. And they've been buying companies three to five for over 100 years. And you want to pay eight. You want to pay 10. You want to pay... T what the fuck? When I do double check and they say, hey, hey, can you send them our way, Dan? For old time's sake, I'll fuck them up the ass good. For old time's sake, Dan. I remember when I... Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. But that's not the business I'm in anymore. It's our market. And anybody that tells you anything, and first of all, you're bored because they're not used to this market. One, where's the money coming from? Where's the equity is the first question. Right? You, I'm not going to go through all that again. We beat that to death. They're not used to it. You've got, it's called leadership. In the, in the, um, in the corona webinars that we've had, not the last one that we saw, we're only going to see that one, uh, they all said, uh, how, do, uh, you know, how do you keep your board in line? How do you? Leadership. And most of you don't have any leadership experience. And being in business 20, 25 years doesn't mean you have any leadership. All that means is you have uh, one year, 20, 25 times experience. And remember what leadership is. It's me getting you and you and you to do what I want you to do when I want you to do it. That's leadership. You saw we, the three webinars from uh, Josh Kim. The longest webinar was seven minutes. The shortest webinar was four minutes. One with a banker, one with a chairman, and one with a prospective seller. Remember? Three, four minutes on the short side, seven minutes on the long side. And you're spending weeks. And I know I'm not having uh, early onset dementia. The difference between, let's just call it average five minutes. Five minutes and weeks, I don't compute. Five weeks and months, I compute less. Five weeks and days, maybe. Five minutes and hours, I can relate. Of course, he's Michelangelo, remember? He's a child prodigy, remember? Well, he's not either of those. but he wanted it more than life itself. And when he called his mom from the, uh, uh, close your phones off, please, uh, the uh, uh, airport in Washington, D.C., and say, hey, mom, I didn't want to be there and cause a scene, but I'll, I'll be back when I'm rich. Click. 17 years old. And he flew to San Francisco with no job. He taught himself to program over a long weekend and got a job at Google or Microsoft or somebody. Of course, programmers are full of shit. They're the highest order of dipshits. Any other comments about the, the woman? But all the comments you made are correct. That, but that's today. And she's done other deals. She, but she's done deals. The irony, that wasn't her first deal. That was her third or fourth deal. And she still got it done. But it was expensive, not expensive in money, expensive in uh, time and pride. She had to go back and you know, say that we did this wrong, we did that wrong, blah, 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 blah. Remember, I told you, one of the characteristics of the high-performance person, he can engage in self-deprecation. He can say, yeah, I made a mistake. He doesn't apologize or say he's sorry or explain. Yeah, I made a mistake, let's go back and do this. But him making a mistake is like water off a duck's back. You'll do anything humanly possible to avoid it. When I say you, I mean everybody. You'll do anything humanly possible to not be subjected to a mistake in front of people. Why? And because you have no self-esteem. Guys, you got to get over that. Otherwise, you're going to be five, six, seven, eight years. Five, six, seven, eight years. And I, you know, although I'm, ha I'm happy for you in five, six, seven, eight years, but I'm, I, don't, I don't give a shit. You know, I'm, I'm way by, past you. You had a question in the back. 
It's also suspicious. Suspicious? Yes. Well, you saying it's suspicious. That, 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 well, only you and I know about you, but I mean, you, you saying it's suspicious is fuck. That, I mean, that's, uh, that's, that, 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 that's rich. Go ahead. Um, that it's not a small part of the revenue they missed, but it's a sizable chunk of 21%. Correct. I mean, that must have come Thank up you. somewhere. Sounds like one of your old deals, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. But when you're in a hurry, and when you have a board, like the accountant, in-house accountant will think, well, the CFO must have covered that. And the CFO will think, well, oh, the in-house accountant must have covered that. And then the lawyer will say, well, and, uh, and then it's like this. And you make errors. And I've been there. Uh, believe me, I've been there. In the 22 deals I did many years ago, which Marcus Bauer has broken uh, last year with uh, 23 deals, um, there was a couple deals that I've accused of being self-serving, just so I could keep, not the record going, because I didn't know it was a record then, self-serving to just to keep uh, in, the, in the papers, et cetera, et cetera, when it wasn't, it wasn't self-serving. Uh, maybe they weren't as good as the other 20 deals we did. I mean, that's easy to see by the numbers. But when you use what I love is a blended rate, when you use a blended rate, then they all look terrific because the two are uh, massaged into uh, the 20 great ones. Correct. That's exactly what he did. Uh, his third, his second or third acquisition was, well, he's in the grooming business, pun intended, dog shit. <laughs> and... Uh, but he just kept making acquisitions because he, he believed, uh, not because he's a criminal attorney, but he believed if you just keep, it's harder to hit a moving target. If he kept moving, he'd get to it. And he did. And now that second or third acquisition in the string of seven or eight that he's he completed, I mean, pales in complexion. Nobody, you know, nobody cares about it. And, but if you sit there and worry about, oh, I fucked this one up, and you, and, and, and you stew on it, it will be meaningful because it may be the only deal you'll ever do. Okay, thank you, YouTube.